Hi, I'm Digital Dan and welcome to Control Freak 2 introduction video. In this video, I will demonstrate how easy it is to integrate Control Freak 2 into an existing project, using Unity Standard Assets as an example. Let's start by importing Unity Standard Assets package from Asset Store. Go to, Main Menu, Window, Asset Store. Now, let's import Control Freak 2 package. Locate Control Freak 2 asset and click Import. Soon after import, Control Freak 2 installer window should pop up. Click install. Installer will add a couple of preprocessor symbols and a set of input axes to Unity Input Manager. This operation will not break your existing project configuration in any way. All Control Freak specific settings can be removed by using the uninstall action from the installer window. Now it's time to run the script converter. Go to, Main Menu, Control Freak 2, CF2 Script Converter. Script Converter will collect every input handling script in your project. You can uncheck the scripts that you don't want to be converted. By clicking on the Show Script Info button at the bottom of the window, you can check what will be converted. Click on the button next to an element to open your IDE and jump right to the collected fragment. When ready, click Convert Selected Scripts and wait for scripts to compile. OK. Now allow me to show you how to create a multi-platform input trig from scratch. Let's go with a character third person scene from sample scenes, scenes. Hit play to test the default controls. Camera rotation is controlled with mouse. Usual keys control character is movement and the space key is used to jump. Hit stop. Now let's run the Control Freak 2 Assistant tool. Go to main menu, Control Freak 2, CF2 Assistant. Hit play to capture used input sources. As you can see on the right, quite a lot of elements were collected. Hit stop and let's start building our rig. Assistant displays a warning message, when there's no input rig selected. In our case, we have to create one, first. Switch to Hierarchy tab. Input rig can be created by going to the main menu, Game Object, 
Control Freak 2 submenu where you will find a couple of options. Since there's already one in the scene, let's choose Input Rig with Panel. Upon rig creation, the Axis Configuration Transfer dialog pops up. Here you can choose which axis to transfer from Unity Input Manager to the newly created rig. Click Transfer Axes and then overwrite all to transfer everything. Created rig is now selected. Notice that icons next to elements in the assistant changed. Red exclamation mark means that element is missing or isn't supported by the rig at all. Yellow check mark means that feature is supported only on standalone platforms, but not on mobile. Green check mark indicates full support. Our rig is missing touch controls, hence the yellow check mark icons next to every element. Let's fix it now. Clicking on the button will bring up a menu where you can bind or create a touch control for given element. Let's get to work and create our first button. Click on the wrench button next to the jump button element and choose, create a button, button with jump axis bound to press. Button creation wizard will pop up. Default settings will work well on this case, notice that wizard created a meaningful name and picked a dedicated sprite for our button. Let's leave positioning mode as static, anchor is ok, too. Click create. Jump button created. Jump button is now supported in mobile mode. Next, let's create a joystick for horizontal and vertical axes that control character's movement. Click on the wrench button next to vertical axis element and select, create a joystick, joystick with vertical axis bound to vertical axis dot. Joystick creation wizard shows up. Since this will be the only joystick used in this rig, let's change the generic name to simply, Joystick. By default, joysticks are created in dynamic mode with region. This will create a combination of a touch joystick as a child to dynamic region object. Let's leave it like this. We have to set up binding section before creation. Vertical axis is already assigned. Enable horizontal axis binding by clicking on the checkbox. Click on the plus sign button to add new axis target to the horizontal axis binding. Target axis name can be typed manually or picked out of a list of available and compatible axis by clicking on the button on the right side. Icon on the button indicates binding state, red icon means that axis of given name doesn't exist. Yellow icon means that entered axis is not compatible with input source, and green icon tells us that everything is ok. Let's get back to our binding. Click on the button and pick use horizontal. Now we can finally click the create button and add our joystick to the rig. This is how our controls look in the game view. Now. Let's add the ability to control the camera with touch. The game originally used mouse delta and that kind of input is best emulated by touch trackpad, so let's create one. Click on the button next to the mouse Y axis element and pick, create a trackpad, trackpad with mouse Y axis bound to vertical swipe delta. Let's change the default name to something meaningful, like look trackpad for example. Default positioning settings, stretch mode on the right half of the screen, will work fine. Like with joystick spinning settings, we have to manually add the second axis. Enable horizontal delta binding and assign mouse X as the target axis. Click create. Move the assistant window aside and check out our rig structure in the hierarchy tab. Let's finish our rig by adding the pause button. Escape key is used to pause the game, so let's create a button for it. Pick create a button and button with escape key code bound to press. Let's change the default button sprite to pause symbol sprite. Click on the sprite to open the sprite selection window and pick CF button pause. Change the name to pause button. 
To place our pause button in the top left corner of the screen, set anchor to top left. Also, let's make it a bit smaller than the action buttons by setting size to 0,1. Click create. Let's switch to game view and hit play to test our rig. Everything works as expected. Now, I'll quickly demonstrate how to use a rig prefab with Unity FPP controller. Let's open character first person scene from sample scenes, scenes folder. Hit play to test unmodified scene. Run Control Freak Assistant to check what's used to control the game. This time we will use a pre-made rig. Go to Plugins, Control Freak 2, Prefabs, Rigs, FPP TPP and drag and drop the CF2 FPP rig prefab onto the Hierarchy tab. Normally, we would have to create an event system object, but in case of this scene, we don't have to as there is one already there, used by the menu system. Hit play to test our rig. Everything works as expected. One interesting feature of this rig is the run button. FPP controller is using the left shift key to increase movement speed while walking. This means that the player have to hold two keys to sprint. That would be very uncomfortable with touch controls. Run button is bound to two targets, left shift key and positive side of the vertical axis. This combination makes possible to sprint forward with just a single button press. The rig we used was configured for gamepad input, so optionally, you can also create a gamepad manager to support game controllers. Go to main menu, game object, control freak 2 and click either, gamepad manager or gamepad manager with notifier. And that's all. Thank you for watching.